Good morning, fifth grade. This is Miss J. Today is Wednesday, June 10th. To be prepared for reading today, make sure, of course, you have your reading YouTube video up, your Google form for your stop and on exit ticket, and you also have the link to Bud and Not Buddy open to chapter 18. So today we're going to be reading chapter 18, and we're going to be tracking the main character, Bud, along with the band members. We want to continue to learn from the main character, Bud, as he interacts with other characters, and mainly in this chapter, his interactions with the setting too. Bud will still be learning a lot about the setting and himself as he progresses closer to the solution to the main conflict of the story if Herman E. Calloway is his father. So we're gonna get into chapter 18 together. We will read page 126 to the end of 127. Then you're going to get into your first stop and jot, showing your understanding of what is going on in the setting. As you're reading, you should recognize the time period and why this is important for what's going on with Bud and why this is happening. Chapter 18. We got in two cars to drive for an hour and a half north of Grand Rapids. We were headed to a dinky town called Macosta. I got to ride with the band while Mr. Jimmy and Herman E. Calloway and the instruments were riding in the Packard. Miss Thomas stayed back at Grand Calloway Station. I had been living with Miss Thomas and the band for about seven days, and this was already my third trip on the road. The band was doing their next favorite thing to playing music. They were teasing each other and talking about Herman E. Calloway behind his back. The thug said to Dirty Deed, I'd be offended, man, and I ain't trying to say that you ain't good on the 88s. But you know, the only reason why, the only reason you got the gig is because you're Dutch. You're white, and you don't have the strongest personality in the world. Deed said, yeah, well, such is life. You think I'm going to give up the best gig in the state just because you'd be offended? Take a look out the window, baby. There's a depression going on. How many folks you see living like us, Negro or white? Not many. That man may have his faults, but he's a struggler. I'm putting my hat in with him. Eddie looked at me and said, Bud, Mr. C has always got a white fella in the band for practical reasons, but we don't hold his skin color against him. He can't help that he was born that way. Deed said, you're just too kind, Edward. Eddie kept talking. We do that because the boy can play. Mr. C won't compromise on his music. I said, why does he always keep one white guy in the band? Deed said, it's the way of the world, Sleepy. It's against the law for a Negro to own any property out wham the log cabin, and so Mr. C put it in my name. Eddie said, that and a lot of times we get gigs playing polka waltzes, and a lot of these white folks wouldn't hire us if they knew we were a Negro band so Deed goes out and sets up everything. But what do they say when the dusky devastators show up? Deed said, well, it's too late for them to say anything then. It's us or no music. Eddie said, and Mr. C tells them, if we aren't the best band they'd ever had, then they don't have to pay. We haven't been stiffed yet. With all the arguing and jokes about Mr. C, the trip seemed real short. We unloaded all of the instruments and waited for nighttime to come. I had heard the band play and practice a thousand times and still had to just about sit on my hands when they were finished so I wouldn't bust out clapping. We finished our set at a little place called the Laughing Jackass and I got to sleep right on stage to guard the instruments. The next morning, I was packing everything into the cases when I got some real bad news. Herman E. Calloway told Mr. Jimmy, I'm going to stay and catch up with Eugene. You head back with the boys. The man who owned the club, Mr. Eugene Miller, used to be in one of Mr. C's bands. Mr. Jimmy said, 
But take your time loading everything into the Packard, and you can ride back with Miss with Herman. Uh-oh. Me and Mr. C looked at each other like this wasn't a good idea. He said, whatever, and walked back to the club's office. I'm going to pause on the reading right here. Head over to your first stop and jot and answer the question. Explain a new understanding about the setting and time period that Bun learns from his car ride experience. Pause the video once you've completed your first stop and jot, then come back. Welcome back. Bud is learning more about how the color of your skin can hold you back from doing greater things. The biggest, most paid gigs are the ones that are predominantly white and usually don't allow black people to play there. The dusky devastators use their white man who plays for them to set up so that the management doesn't see the band is predominantly black. They do this so the band can still play and get paid instead of getting, instead of kicked off of the stage since the play will need music anyway. So you should have completed the first paragraph in, on page 130. Now you're gonna head over to your second stop and jot and make sure that you have it completed. Our second stop and drop question was, why does Bud think Herman has been waiting long enough? Long enough for what? Bud thinks it's finally time to actually talk about his mother to him, and it's long overdue for the conversation to happen. Now we're going to finish reading page 130 together. While we're reading, think about why is Herman angry after Bud shows him his rocks. Once we complete page 130, you will then complete your last stop and job. He said, where did you find these? Didn't I tell you not to do any rummaging around in that room you've been sleeping in? He reached for the rocks. I don't know why, but I let him take them. He was the first person other than Bugs that I'd ever let touch the rocks that my mama had given to me. Mr. C turned the rocks over and over in his hand and said, Well, where'd you get these? Uh-oh. I could tell by the way Herman E. Calloway was holding my rocks that he didn't plan on giving them back to me anytime soon. I kept watching his hand, waiting for a chance to snatch my rocks and get out of there. If I could get my hands back on my rocks, I knew I could outrun Mr. C, even though he was a lot stronger and his legs were a lot longer than mine. Herman E. Calloway said, Answer me, where'd you take these from? Mr. C sounded meaner than he ever had before. Mr. Jimmy had heard Mr. Jimmy heard him and put down the box he was carrying and walked over to us real quick. Herman E. Calloway had the rock squeezed tight in his right hand fist and had his left hand fist balled up like he was ready to fight. Mr. Jimmy said, Herman, what's this? What's wrong? He stood between me and Mr. C. Herman E. Calloway said, I told you about this boy from the word go. He's been snooping through things in the house and that he's got no business being in. He stole these. I said, no, sir, I did not. Mr. C said, then where'd you get them? I'm not going to ask you again. He unsqueezed the rocks in his hand. I was surprised they hadn't turned into diamonds or dust the way he'd been holding them so tight. Mr. Jimmy took my two rocks from him. He looked at the writing and said, Flint, Michigan, August 18th, 1911, in Gary, Indiana, July 13th, 1912. That's more than 25 years ago. Why is Herman angry after Bud shows him his rocks?
Right. Herman thinks Bud stole the rocks when he was staying in the room and rummaging through his things when everyone was sleeping in the house. Now we're going to complete the rest of the chapter, then you will complete your stop and job. He squatted down and looked right at me and said, son, where'd you find these? Just tell the truth. I kept one eye on Mr. C. He still looked like he was getting ready to jump funny on me. I said, Mr. Jimmy, I didn't find them or steal them from nowhere. These have always been mine. I got them from my mama and that's the swear for tide truth. Now, could I please have my rocks back, sir? I stuck my hand out. Both Mr. Jimmy and Herman E. Calloway said, Your mama? Yes, sir. I kept my hand out. Mr. Jimmy said, Bud, where did your mother get these? I said, I don't know, sir. She always had them. Mr. Jimmy and Herman E. Calloway were looking at with that can't decide which hand to smack you with look when Mr. Jimmy said, Bud, what did your mama say? What did you say your mama's name was? No one ever asked me, sir. Herman E. Calloway was still hot. You throw a lot of sirs around, but you still got a real strong, real small-mouthed, disrespectful streak in you, boy. Now you answer the question, or I'll... I screamed at him, Angela, sir. I was so mad that I hadn't meant to say sir, but it came out anyway. Her name is Angela Janet Caldwell. Mr. Jimmy said, Lord, have mercy. Harmony Calloway's pot pipe dropped out of his mouth and stumbled and fumbled into Grand Calloway Station, failing his way like he'd been stuck blind. Then I knew Harmony Calloway was the best liar in the world. He'd been lying to me and everybody else all along. Now that there was some good proof against him, he was all shook up. I said to Mr. Jimmy, I knew it. I knew he was my father. Mr. Jimmy was still crouched down right in front of me. He said, Bud, he's not your father. Yes, sir, he is. That's why he ran off like that. He got cut, caught lying after all these years. Mr. Jimmy said, Bud, that's enough. Herman is not your father. But Angela Janet is his daughter's name. If what you're saying is true, Lord help us all. It looks like Herman might be your grandfather. This was real surprising, but the thing I felt most was glad that Herman E. Calloway wasn't my dad. Shucks, who'd want a daddy that on top of being so old and so doggone mean had such a big belly? Not me. Now I want you to pause the video and answer your third stop and job. Explain the result of Bud's problem and describe two emotions Bud is experiencing while finding this out. Once you've completed it, come back to the video. Welcome back. So we learned that Herman E. Calloway is Bud's grandfather. Bud is sad yet relieved that this old, mean man isn't his father. Today's secret code for reading is Blueberry. B-L-U-E-B-E-R-R-Y. Again, today's secret code for reading is Blueberry. B-L-U-E-B-E-R-R-Y. Now you're going to head over to your reading stop and draw and complete the exit ticket questions.